So Hank Green actually visited my office today, and it was so cool because he was one of the, the many YouTube influencers that kind of inspired me and really informs the way that I create content. It, it, it was just really special. You know, he answered one of my questions, which was nice. And it was a question about inclusivity and checking your privilege and everything like that. But during the Q&A, he brought up something that I always knew about, but something that I never really thought that hard about until he said it. Um, I think he just has that power over people, honestly. But the thing that scares him the most about... I guess our world, our country, our internet is just how much people hate each other. Whether or not it's for good reason, even though it's well-founded by people that are disenfranchised, that hatred is obviously not going to be very well, well received by the people in privilege. I, I, I'm not saying that we should placate them, but it's definitely something that I've been thinking about since the Q&A. A really good point that he brought up during the Q&A was how good it feels and how fun it feels to be right. I pride myself on being on the right side of history, and I still think that I am because it's usually the more liberal side that usually ends up being on the right side of history. And, you know, a lot of my beliefs are based off of listening to other people and other disenfranchised people and understanding their experiences, while most conservative sides are usually very close-minded. The type of content that I make, including here and at work, it preaches to the choir, you know? Like, are the people that hate what I make and hate the things that I'm talking about right now, are they actually going to listen to me? And are they actually going to change their mind? No, probably not. It's hard because, you know, that's the kind of change that I'm trying to make. And I think... And, and, and so the question comes to, like, well, well, how do you change the world then if you just are making content that preaches to the choir. I honest, God, I honestly don't know because I think it's really, really important to make content that uplifts you and that is true to yourself and is true to your own identity. But at the same time, like, as I discussed in the last video with Leo, it can be so easy to be wrapped up in your own mindset, you know? You just keep pushing out content and you keep making statements about how you're right and other people are wrong. And it feels really good, but... I think you have to come to this very <laughs> crushing realization that the people that disagree with you, they're doing the exact same thing. They are making statements and contents to uplift each other as well. Even though the ideas that I attack are from people that are very closed-minded and not understanding and very limited in their view of what normal is, um, they're doing the exact same thing. They feel like the liberal majority is oppressing them and that they're disenfranchised and I'm part of the team of bullies. Just like me, there are a lot of people that create spaces where people that have similar ideas can feel fortified and can support each other even though it might not be right in the long run. There are so many people that, that support each other in in their hatred towards trans people or gay people or black people or whatever type of people. And I think when you come down to it, like we're, we're still at a point where both sides are just uplifting each other and there's just more tension happening and there's not enough meaning in the middle. And, and it's hard for me to even say that because I used to be of the mindset that the idea of meeting in the middle was just a way to placate people that have always been in power, you know? Like, why should I try to meet in the middle with white people? Why should I try to meet in the middle with straight people? They've had their voices heard for such a long time. Like, it's time for me to say something and I don't have to care what they have to say because I know what they have to say because what they have to say is so deeply ingrained in the mainstream. But I think, uh, unfortunately, like, meeting in the middle is kind of like how change has to happen. But meeting in the middle is so hard because it places an even more burden on the oppressed, which they have enough problems, you know? And and now, like, to meet in the middle, you know, and you have to feel angry and then compartmentalize that anger in order to be calm, in order to calmly converse with somebody and try to help them see your point of view and, and kind of show them why you're right. It can definitely feel like the side that I oppose is not as willing to do that. For whatever type of oppression that someone faces, they have the right to feel that way. You know, black people have the right to be very angry. Um, that some people just don't care about their lives and people, even though they don't realize it, see them as not hum real humans. And trans people have the right to be very angry with cis people. But even with all of that anger, you have to stay as calm as the people in privilege because they're always pretty calm unless, like, you try to threaten their privilege. We have all of these really great messages that are usually for disenfranchised groups, like people of color or women, 
or um, trans people about, you know, loving yourself and not letting anybody, um, you know, strike you down and everything and, you know, not letting other people tell you what to do. But, but we have to understand that people that we think are wrong, they tell themselves that also. Conservatives, you know, people that hate gay people, people that hate black people probably tell themselves the same thing. That, you know, that we're the bullies, that they're not going to let anybody tell them what to think because... Um, they don't understand what it's like to be them and all they're doing is just being themselves and people that think that they're wrong are just attacking the most fundamental part of themselves. I think I'm reaching a point of realization where maybe not as much learning is happening as it needs to be. And the more I think about it, the more sad it gets and the, the more nihilistic I feel. Like, I get very Nietzsche when um, I start thinking about that. And I think it just all comes down to the fact that everybody wants to feel that they're right. I mean, I still feel like I'm approaching, you know, the way that I feel right in a more logical standpoint. But at the same time, like, is anything actually going to change if you if you just keep preaching to the choir and you, if you just keep making content that is for you to uplift yourself? I think the, a balance just needs to be strike, right? Of content that uplifts your own disenfranchised group, but also making content that meets people in the middle and tries to m create constructive conversations. Um, which is not always easy. Like, the more you think about it, the more of a daunting problem it becomes. And I think this actually goes back to my previous point that I made with Leo. I think the best place to start is just with yourself and being the change that you want to see. As hard as it is, especially for me, like, you can't expect to change the world all by yourself, but you have to at least try to point as many people as you can in the right direction, I think. And that all starts with yourself. And when I say starting with yourself, I don't just mean speaking out. Um, your own opinions, but that also means trying your best to learn about as many other experiences that are not your own as possible. That's how you get a better understanding of the world, and you don't have control over a lot of things in this world, but I think the one thing that you do have is with yourself. And you can only hope that all of these improvements that you make about yourself that people will see. That's at least how change starts. And when I say starting with yourself, I think that it means not being addicted to the feeling of being right. Even though it feels really good to be right, it's also important to just level with people, even though they don't deserve it. Th this is just something that I would hopefully like to keep in mind the next time I speak up or make a any kind of content about something is, am I doing this to try to make change or am I doing this just because it feels good to be right? Usually it's the latter, but um, I'll, I'm going to try to be better about it. And I hope that you guys feel it too. So thank you so much for watching. I always, always love and appreciate you. And I hope that you will join me on this journey of being less addicted to the wonderful feeling of being right. Bye!